Following the Russo-Japanese War, the Russian Navy was shocked and devastated by the losses they faced in the naval battles of the war. This would lead to the Russian Admiralty to question its future in ship designs and tactics that it wanted to employ. Now, technology advanced at a rapid rate, especially naval technologies in the early 20th century. One of the most critical advancements was the advent of the Dreadnought-style battleship that carried a uniform main battery, which was brought into the world through HMS Dreadnought in 1906. This same year, the Russians held a design contest for a new line of capital ships, but due to the Russian government's lack of money and main priority on rebuilding the army following the war, the ships did not really start building until 1911. The ships would serve in the Imperial Russian and Soviet navies. Along with that, they would serve both in the First and Second World Wars. In the class, there would be four ships built, the Ganget, Petropavlovsk, Sevastopol, and Poltava all named for famous Russian battles. I'll be talking about Ganget herself, as some see her as the lead ship of the class, but based off Russian naming convention at the time, it would be the Sevastopol class of battleships, as that was the first ship to be launched and commissioned. Alright, moving on swiftly to the design. Ganget would have a design displacement of around 23,000 tons, and I apologize because in my research, I could not come to a consensus on what her actual displacement weight was. I've seen anywhere from a little over 23,000 tons standard displacement and over 25,000 tons full load. If anybody has any sources or an answer, it would be much appreciated. Nevertheless, the ship would be powered by 25 Euro boilers, which it has to be said that these were chosen after a phase of arguments of whether or not to use older, less care-intensive boilers or the Euro boilers. This dispute was ended when the Russian General Naval Staff simply staffed the board that was deciding this with people who supported the new technology. Moving on, the boilers powered four turbines that turned four shafts, producing around 52,000 shaft horsepower, meaning she reached a very respectable 24 knots. Now, her armament layout is that all of the main battery turrets are on the center line of the ship, which can be attributed to being the fact that the Russians did not really like the idea of super-firing turrets because they believed that broadside firepower was more important than end-on firepower. In those turrets, each one would carry three 12-inch guns or 305mm guns, meaning that she had a broadside of 12 total guns. Her secondary battery consisted of 16 4.7-inch or 120mm guns, as well as a 3-inch or 76mm AA gun. She would also carry four torpedo tubes. Her armor for a dreadnought-style battleship was relatively thin, even compared with contemporary battleships or battlecruisers, with the belt having around 4.8 to 8.9 inches, or 125 to 225 millimeters of armor. The deck would be around half an inch to 2 inches, or 12 to 50 millimeters of armor. The turrets had between 3 and 8 inches, or 75 to 150 millimeters of armor. Now, as I mentioned previously, the ships did not really start construction until 1911, but they were technically started in 1909, but there were payment issues, so 1911 is really when they started. But Gangert herself would be commissioned in the Russian Navy in January of 1915. Now, these ships were designed in the second generation of dreadnoughts and would have been very competitive with their contemporary designs. However, by the time that they were actually completed and commissioned, other navies were in the second generation of super dreadnoughts, so they were going to be outmatched by whatever turned out to be their main opponent in World War I in the Baltic, which turned out to be the German Navy. Seeing how Gangant and the rest of her class were all built in the Russian capital of St. Petersburg, or the alternative name at the time, Petrograd, they were all commissioned in the Baltic Fleet. Now, the main objective of the Russian Baltic Fleet was to guard the mouth of the Gulf of Finland, which they were generally successful at, considering the Germans did not even really make an attempt to attack the area with any of their capital ships. Also, the Russian High Command was very reluctant to use these ships in combat, seeing how that they were their only dreadnought-style ships they had. Following the February Revolution in the German advance, the fleet had to make a daring journey through the ice-covered gulf. Ganget and the Russian fleet moved from their base in the new Finnish capital of Helsinki back to Kronstadt in St. Petersburg. After the Civil War, the ships were given new names with appropriate revolutionary gusto. Ganget's new name was the October Revolution, given to her by her new owners, the Bolsheviks. The October Revolution would be modernized in the early 1930s, as the Soviets did not really have the ability to make new capital ships for a number of reasons like the lack of expertise in making enough steel plating for new capital ships. So they essentially just did the best they could with what they had. She would be given 12 new oil-fired boilers from a never-completed Borodino-class battlecruiser. Along with that, they would make alterations to the ship's superstructure and funnels, along with giving her more underwater protection, as well as refitting the ship to have better sea-keeping abilities, and improve the anti-aircraft battery to more than just one gun. Now, before the Soviets joined the Second World War, October Revolution participated in the Winter War between the Soviet Union and Finland in 1939. 
which basically consisted of bombardment missions against Finnish positions that really didn't amount to much before she was driven off by Finnish coastal guns. As well as she had her anti-aircraft battery increased that winter, and having more AA added on in the spring of 1941. Following the Soviet occupation of Estonia, October Revolution would be based out of Tallinn, the former capital of the nation, and that's where she was when the Germans invaded the Soviet Union on June 22, 1941. She was forced back to Kronstadt by the speed of the German advance. Now, by September, the ship had opened fire on the advancing German troops in the Leningrad area. Now, she would be badly damaged later that month by German bombs that incapacitated two of her turrets, and she was repaired in the city, in which she would again have her anti-aircraft battery improved. She would support the Soviet efforts in the siege of Leningrad and continue to support the Red Army as they pushed the Germans back, continuing to support them all the way up into June 1944, where she bombarded Finnish positions. After the war, there really wasn't a whole lot known about the October Revolution. She would be kept on the active ship list until 1954, where she was reclassified as a school ship, or a training ship, and then stricken from the list altogether in 1956. I think this class shows something very profound. They show Russia's ability to make do with what they have and use them as well as could be expected for ships that were simply out of date by the time that they were completed. Thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe as it will help the channel to grow.